Yes, any man that blows up his Lambo from going hard is my type of man. And do yourself a favour, go check him out because come on, have a look at him. Ho, ho, ho. The man, Woo-hoo! the man is just a freaking cool dude. And if you want to know about cars, investing, crypto, all that good stuff, go check out his channel. I'll leave a link in the description and tell him I sent you. Now I am excited because yes, we're going to compare the MacBook Pro to the XPS 15 and 17. Well, at least the key specs of it at the moment. Of course, once I get in the XPS 17 and XPS 15, that's going to be my main focus, comparing it to the MacBook Pro 16 and comparing it to the Zephyrus G14 with the Ryzen 4900HS. And of course, I'll do all the gaming reviews, everything like that. And please sub up because I'm going to give you the best coverage on these products. And once we're finished here comparing the key areas of the MacBook Pro 16 versus XPS 15, 17, I'm going to do a Q&A, which one you should get, all the questions you've been asking me, should you wait for the new MacBook Pro? Should you wait for the XPS 15? Should you get the old XPS 15 or the 17? And I got so many questions on it and I'm going to answer the most common ones and ones that I thought were really good. And man, I got a lot of questions and I do apologize if I didn't answer your question because I just got too many and I couldn't keep up. And basically, if I was answering all those questions, I wouldn't be able to get stuff done. So I think you want the content. So anyway, let's get into the key differences between the MacBook Pro 16 to 19. Now, one thing I will tell you is the MacBook Pro should have a refresh middle of the year at WWDC. So what is that? Is that June? Providing there are no delays, obviously we know the current situation. But the big upgrades to the MacBook Pro 16 should be the new mini LED HDR 1000 nit display, 1000 nit peak that is. It should have Wi-Fi 6 and Intel's 10th generation CPUs. So that's just something to bear in mind. But we're having a look here at obviously the current Mac and the XPS 15 and 17. So let's first look at the processors up the top. 9th generation versus 10th generation, really, let's move on. There's not that much difference. Yes, the 10th generation better, better performance per watt. There's some tweaks there, less vulnerabilities. It is a better chip, there's no doubt about it. And as I said, the Mac will get this update eventually in the middle of the year. But this is not a separating factor. They're basically going to use the same CPUs. What is going to be interesting to see is how much watts the XPS 15 and 17 can sustain. Now, the MacBook Pro can do over 60 watts. It will depend on chip to chip. I had ones that could do 68 watts. Like, yes, maintain up around the 68 watt mark. Now, the current XPS 15 is limited to 56 watts. Now, there's going to be new thermals with the new XPS line. So I expect it's going to do more than 56 watts. So hopefully it's over 60. Now, if you can hear that fan in the background, it's actually the G14 running through some tests. I apologize for that. Now, for RAM, they all have a maximum of 64 gigs. Now, you should be able to upgrade the XPSs to 128 gigs when they bring out 64 gig so dips. I think they already have them. But they'll be super expensive. It'll be like a thousand dollars for 128 gigs or whatever. But anyway, let's just say 64 for now. Now, of course, the XPS 15 to 17, it's faster RAM. Go check out Jared Tech's video. Now, faster RAM doesn't make that much difference in gaming. Some games it does, but they're far and few between. But it can make a big difference in content creation. And the difference between 2666 and 2933. Yeah, it's not that much of a big deal, but remember, you can replace the RAM in the XPS 15, and I can't see why you couldn't put 3,200 MHz RAM in the XPS 15. So it is upgradable, but of course with the Mac, you cannot upgrade it. Now, if we move on to GPUs, the XPS 17 most definitely has the best GPU. 6 gigabytes RTX 2060. What kind of RTX 2060? Who friggin' knows? Talking to Steve from Owner Disown, we're thinking it's probably going to be a Max Q, but it doesn't state it's a Max Q. I have no doubt they'll be able to fit a full RTX 2060 in the XPS 17. So that would mean probably over 180 watts, 220 watts. There is no such thing as a 220 watt USB C, but Dell can make a custom one. They already have a 130 watt custom USB Type C charger, so it doesn't have any other charging ports than the USB C to Thunderbolt. So maybe it is a lower wattage version. We don't know, but certainly the RTX 2060 and the XPS 17 is going to be the best graphics. Now, the GTX 1650 Ti will be the second best graphics. 
that's what NVIDIA do, right? The RX 5500 beat the 1650, so they brought out a TI version and it will be faster than 5500. Well, at least the PZ version. you got to remember the Mac one is a custom version. It has an extra two compute units than the PC RX 5500. It is a lower wattage, it's 50 watts, but it does have that eight gigabytes of RAM and it does use the professional drivers. I'm talking about the Radeon Pro and the Mac here. So for me, I love the eight gigabytes of video memory and I just wish they had a 1660 Ti in the XPS 15 just for the extra two gigabytes of video memory. Now, if you're just doing 4K content, remember these aren't gaming laptops, although yes, you can play games on all of them. I'm talking purely for content creation. If you're dealing with, say, 4K content, the four gigabytes on the GTX 1650 on the XPS 15 is perfectly fine. But if you're gonna start using 6K and 8K, you're better off with the Mac or the XPS 17. Now, when it comes to displays, all 16 by 10, woof, yes. So good, so good. They're all 16 by 10. Now they're all 500 nits. Doesn't matter if you get the full HD on the XPSs, they're both 500 nits. The Mac is 500 nits as well. Now the XPSs do have a full HD plus, and then they have a 4K plus or Ultra HD plus. So you're getting higher resolution with the XPSs. So they will use more battery, there's no doubt about it. Look, we don't know until we test these things, see how good the XPS is. But let's just say for argument's sake, it's a good panel, it's up to the mark. What you're going to have to choose here is what size display do you want and do you need the higher resolution? 100% Adobe RGB versus P3. P3 is made more for video. Adobe RGB is made more for photographers and print work, but it doesn't matter because the color gamuts are so wide on both of them that you can use either for all. Now the Mac does have a ghosty display. We'll see what happens with these XPS if they ghost a bit. They're gonna ghost, they all ghost. Any of these wide color gamut like high quality displays, they're always going to be 60 hertz and they're always going to be ghosty, but it's not going to be fast. Now, I will say from using an XPS and a MacBook Pro video editing, sometimes I miss the sharpness on the MacBook Pro. What I mean by that is a soft image will slip through. That doesn't happen with the XPS because it is 4K and I see one-to-one -one previews and I can tell how sharp it is. Sometimes it looks sharp on the Mac, but that's just the interpolation. Like, I can't really tell because I can't display it in true 4K. So every now and then I'll let slip an image that is not as sharp as I want it to be on the Mac. That's just one thing I've noticed. Now with SSDs, whew, eight terabytes on the Mac. That is just amazing. Now the XPS 15 is upgradable, M.2, it's not soldered, only one slot though. The XPS 17 has two slots. That is the best solution because you can have one SSD for your operating system, one for your content or games or whatever you want to do. You can also rate it too. So you can rate it together to get faster speed. So I could imagine with the XPS 17, you might be able to get like four or 5,000 megabytes per second. Yeah, if you rate two fast SSDs together, that's probably what you'll get. With battery, the Mac has the biggest battery. The XPS 17 is not far behind and the XPS 15 has dropped battery capacity. I'm pretty confident the Mac will have the best battery life. I think a 17 inch display is going to use more power and it's got a smaller battery on the XPS 17 and dropping that little bit of battery capacity on the XPS 15 given that it's a 4K display as well and they're both high resolution XPS 15 and 17 I expect that to have less battery life than the Mac as well unless these are new panels that are really power efficient we don't know. That's going to be the deciding factor how much juice those panels suck, but I fully expect the Mac to have the best battery life, but the XPS 15 and 17 will have good battery life, no doubt, and that's one of the reasons why I like them. They do have good battery life. When it comes to weight and thickness, well, just looking at that, it actually amazes me that the Mac is actually two kilos or 4.3 pounds, 16.2 millimeters thick, so it's the thinnest out of all of them, and it's the lightest. And it's got a bigger display than the XPS 15. Thermally, it's good. As I said, you could pump over 60 watts into that CPU. Yes, when the GPU is lit up, there are some thermal constraints there. But for that sort of size, that package is quite amazing that you're getting a 16-inch in that sort of form factor. Now, it is a big footprint, though. The XPS 15 is going to be so much more compact. It is thicker. It is slightly heavier, the XPS 15. But it's going to be so much more compact. 
And when we go over to the XPS 17, we go into 19.5 millimeters thick and 2.51 kilos or 5.53 pounds. Now on the XPS 15 and the XPS 17, you can get the smaller battery and reduce the weight significantly. If you get the full HD display, that is sort of like an option because from my testing, the small battery in the full HD display is around the same sort of battery life as the 4K and the big battery. And then if you get the big battery in a full HD, the battery life will be like the best out of all of them. Like that'll be like 10 hours plus and it will even beat the MacBook Pro easily for battery life if you get the big battery and a full HD. But with the full size batteries, that's a fair commitment that XPS 17. You know, it's like 500 grams or like that's over a pound, isn't it? I don't know, pounds, sorry. That is a fair bit heavier. I suspect that's because it's got an RTX 2060 so it needs the thermal headroom. Also, you got two M.2 slots and you have four Thunderbolt 3s, which the MacBook Pro has four Thunderbolt 3s as well. But the XPS 15 only has two Thunderbolt 3s and it has one USB Type-C. So it's missing out on two Thunderbolt 3s compared to the MacBook Pro 16 and the XPS 17. And both the XPS 17 and the XPS 15 do have an SD card slot. So that's how the Mac's been for ages. I love it like that. But it looks like with the XPSs, or the SexBSs, you're getting all the good stuff in the XPS 7e. You're getting the good graphics, you're getting the big battery, you're getting two M.2s, you're getting all the Thunderbolt ports. I assume they couldn't put the extra Thunderbolts and the extra M.2 on the XPS 15 because it's so compact. Maybe they couldn't fit it. You know, there's a lot of heat from the Thunderbolt 3 controllers. Also, adding another M.2, you need somewhere on the motherboard to do it. And it's pretty thin and compact, so maybe they couldn't do it. Or maybe they've just munted it a little bit compared to the XPS 17. Because it's more mass market and they're going to sell more of them just to make more of a margin. I don't know. We'll have to look inside to see the board to actually see if they actually did have room. I suspect not. Now, when it comes to connectivity, you do have Wi-Fi 6 on both XPSs and you have Wi-Fi 5 on the MacBook Pro 16. Now, I've actually put the Qualcomm Wi-Fi on both of these because I do believe that that is going to be the Wi-Fi they're going to use going forward. They do have the Intel killer one. So at launch, that's the one that's going to come with. I think you want to wait for the Qualcomm one because I think that Qualcomm one is going to be more power efficient and I think it'll be probably faster. So I don't want that Intel Wi-Fi. I want this Qualcomm one for the reason I've stated with the Mac Wi-Fi 5. If you don't have a Wi-Fi 6 router, it's not going to matter Wi-Fi 6, Wi-Fi 5, all right? So if you haven't upgraded your wireless router or router in the last few years, you don't have Wi-Fi 6, so it's going to make no difference. Yes, you'll get slightly faster transfers with Wi-Fi 6 on a Wi-Fi 5 router. You don't get the latency benefits, you don't get the extra speed. So I wouldn't worry about Wi-Fi 6, Wi-Fi 5, unless you're going to upgrade your router. So now let's get into the, all the questions. Let's do them in rapid fire, eh? Old XPS or new XPS? If you want the 16x10 display, you need the extra Thunderbolt and you like the sexy new look, yeah, wait for the new one. If those things don't mean nothing to you, get the old one, man. You're going to pick that up on the steel. Release date. It's got to be soon, right? It has to be soon. And the Mac, we know it's middle of the year, the update for that. But the XPS 15, it should be this month. The XPS 17 was supposed to be at the end of the year, but they have a product page for it. So I can't think that that's going to be delayed for much longer than the XPS 15. So I do expect something to happen this month. So make sure you subscribe for that. No Ryzen, no Ryzen. Oh, I don't know how many times I've got the no Ryzen thing. Well, if you haven't noticed, all the main laptops are still sticking with Intel. Now I'm testing the G14 with the 4900HS. And there's some things it's a clear winner, but um, if you're a Premiere Pro user, you use H.265, H.264. Just sub up for that video. You're going to not believe it. Anyway, I do think Intel is still the right choice at the moment. We don't know what's in the pipeline. We don't know what they have next. They're probably going to have a 10-core next. They've got the 10-core desktops now, but then Ryzen might release a 12-core. Well, who knows? It's good to see competition. We have to see how many Thunderbolt 3s you can actually put on the Ryzen system. But trust me, you want to watch that video where I compare Intel's latest to the G14 with AMD's latest compared to the MacBook Pro. Wi-Fi 6, wait for the Qualcomm. Yes, I do agree with that. 
OLED versus HDR LED. Well, I picked the LED display over the OLED when I bought my XPS 15. I don't know if I made the right choice. It was a really hard choice to make. These XPS displays, it says HDR 400. It's not real HDR. It's not 1000 nit peak brightness, which maybe the Mac will have in the middle of the year. But hopefully it's a good panel. I find with LED versus OLED, what I see is what I get with LED. With OLED, I've got to compensate more. So when I look at an OLED display, I've got to know that that contrast and that saturation and those blacks, they're not going to look like that on any other display except an OLED. Whereas with the LED, I know what I see is what's going to be on other displays as well. And on an OLED, it's just going to be even a next level above that. So for me, LED is just more what you see is what you get. Small battery, yes. I think the battery life's going to be worse unless these panels are more power efficient. Yeah, so maybe the old XPS 15 is the go. I wish they would have kept the battery bigger. Price, whoo, I got asked a lot about the price. They're going to be exy. That 17 is going to be really expensive. And the XPS 15, especially when it comes out, yeah, that's going to be XE as well. Lately in Australia especially, the price of the Dells have just been going out of control, especially when you get the i9. I mean, I was able to get an i9 in a MacBook Pro cheaper than a Dell. And I was just like, what? Fix your prices, Dell. But the good thing about Dells are they go on sale a lot. So yeah, you just wait for one of those sales, 15, 20% off. 60 hertz, yes. Well, <laughs> I honestly don't know of a laptop with a high quality wide gamut display that is over 60 hertz. So until that happens, what can I say? No USB type A. Yeah, I know that sucks for some people, but they include the dongle with it. Just change everything to USB type C. And yes, I know some mice and stuff like that and keyboards, you can't do it but um even like webcams or whatever but um i think it's the right time to go usb type c it is 2020 now this is a question from my man lover of tech you should check out his channel as well he's got great stuff on cameras and phones and stuff will the xps 17 and 15 perform as good as the macbook pro on battery no they won't they draw more power, so it's harder for them to do that. If the XPS 17 is 180 watts or 220 watts or whatever it is, or 150 watts, that's a lot more power to draw from the battery than 96 watts on the MacBook Pro. So the MacBook Pro gets full performance when it's unplugged. These Windows laptops won't. And there's Optimus in there as well, which screws with stuff as well. But I can guarantee you none of the Windows laptops will give you full power unplugged there may be some exceptions but um generally no but i will say editing on your battery is just going to kill your battery because it draws from the battery so fast this was an excellent question eGPU performance with the xps this is one good thing about the xps or the macbook pro you might be thinking oh it's got a 1650 i can get an rtx 2070 in whatever laptop that's true but those laptops with the rtx 2070s if you put an eGPU on them with the graphics card like even 2080 ti they don't perform any better. I've tested with a 2080 Ti and because of the bottleneck, it was actually slower in a lot of tests and some it was faster, but mostly it was slower. With the XPS 15, it's got a 1650 on it. You can really improve the performance with an eGPU if you want. So you sort of get the best of both worlds if you need it. You can get the extra power of the graphics if you have an eGPU. Now with the 2060 on the XPS 17, you probably can get some gains. It's not going to be a massive gain from that. But certainly the XPS 15 will be able to boost its performance. Thermals, people are worried about thermals. Well, they said they've worked on it. We'll have to wait and see. The last XPS 15 could do 56 watts. Let's hope it's over 60 with this. And hopefully when you light up the GPU and CPU together, we can get some more power into it. There will be power limit throttling as well with the XPS 15. I don't know how much watts it uses. I'm assuming it's 130. Just have to wait and see. Battery life, I've gone through that. Is it a full RTX 2060 in the XPS 17? Well, I don't know yet, to be honest, but it says RTX 2060 I expect it can handle it. It's just the uh, being USB-C and how are you going to get that much power to it sort of thing. It's a size and weight where it could handle 2060, no problem. Anyway, I hope I answered one of your questions. If you have any more, let me know down there in the comments. I'll see what I can do. Can't wait to compare all of these with the Ryzen G14 as well. Stay tuned, sub up, catch you in the next one. Tally ho.